Well, the question of how we begin as a human being and how we develop is an old issue. It was only when embryos became available outside the womb that the present questions became asked. And that's what prompted the government to set up the Warnock Committee in the 1980s, which looked in considerable detail at the moral and ethical issues surrounding the human embryo and to what extent research might or might not be permitted. Single-celled embryos, most of these, most of our fertilised embryos, don't end up as babies at all. They're lost at a very, very early stage, before you would even notice that you were pregnant. Those embryos that are fertilised and do go on to become babies may not become just one baby, but two or more. They could be uh, identical twins or triplets. So what we have at the beginning of the embryonic development, fertilisation, is something that could be no one, two or more babies. So I think it's very difficult to call that a person. The main conclusion of the Warnock Committee was that while the human embryo deserves greater respect than that generally accorded to human tissues, it should not necessarily be given respect due to actual persons until about 14 days. And after 14 days, the so-called primitive streak begins, where here is the beginning of sentience, consciousness, the beginning of organs, and beyond this point, one should not therefore research. The majority view was that you could use surplus embryos from IVF treatments to do research. During in vitro fertilisation, the eggs are fertilised in a dish, and there they can develop to what's called the blastocyst stage. They can't develop into a baby without being transferred into a woman's body and then implanted in the womb. Embryonic stem cells are made from these early blastocysts, which consist of around 100 to 200 cells and they're no bigger than a grain of sand. During the in vitro fertilization procedures, there are always a number of uh, extra embryos which are not implanted into the mother and are actually kept frozen in, in special uh, freezers. Uh, so for example, in many countries, there are uh, many thousand, even 30 or 50,000 over exceeding embryos, which are kept in these freezers. Uh, and basically they are kept there forever and ever with, without any, let's say, use. You have, on the one hand, um, uh, an embryo which would otherwise be thrown away or stored for uh, indefinitely. And on the other hand, people who almost everybody knows who, who suffer from really debilitating and, and uh, serious diseases. So for me, that's, that's a big argument in favor of using embryonic stem cells. <laughs> 